thank you for having me. Um, my name is uh, Peter Portheine. I'm the co-founder of uh, IPO, Eindhoven International Project Office. And we are a boutique advisory on economic transformation. We are based in the Netherlands, in Eindhoven. And Eindhoven is the, uh, the high-tech capital of the Netherlands. And as you might know, the hometown of companies like Philips and ASML. So I used to work in Eindhoven and also as a public servant on the provincial council of the, the province of North Brabant on the development of Brainport. Brainport is the high-tech hub in the Netherlands. And as you know, the high-tech in the Netherlands is now bringing technology all around the world. So we managed to develop Eindhoven from a relatively small city into the, the hub of high-tech, not only in the Netherlands, but also in, Europe, in the world. From Eindhoven, equipment to all major semiconductor manufacturers are manufactured and shipped. Um, this supply chain that works around ASML has instances in uh, Malaysia, in China, in many countries of the world. So we have a lot of suppliers who work in the supply chain together with ASML to manufacture this very complex equipment. From the, from the experience in Eindhoven, we have been um, invited by Bin Jung already eight years ago, hosting a delegation, and they got inspired by the model of economic transformation of our city. So at that time, we decided to build and start our own business on economic advisory. And like seven years ago, we were contracted by Becamex, Chairman Hung, who had a, a strong vision on the economic future of this province to help uh, him to deploy a new strategy, how to take the economy from Ben Jung, from where it came from, the, the agricultural past via the basic industrialization towards new economy as we are now uh, heading for. So as the director of the Organ International Project Office, how do you view the transformation of the profit from an agrarian base to an advanced manufacturing hub? What key accomplishments have been achieved at Bindu province since the launch of the Swap City project in 2000? Well, I think Bin Jung has realized that where they came from, large manufacturing, low value, and also low cost type of labor with big land uh, consumption for these big plants. They are now moving into a more high, higher type of value in the, in the industry. So we are moving up the value chain. We try to increase the local value in the economy. And we also attract, try to attract businesses that are more future proof in terms of having a sustainable business model and also moving towards more circular way of work. And I think one of the big accomplishments of the Smart City project and also about Bin Jung is that they had the strong vision at the start uh, among the leadership of the province, but also within Becamex, that we are moving from a traditional manufacturing industry to a more knowledge-based economy. And that, will, and that will require a different ecosystem, as we, as we call it. An ecosystem that can provide the right type of education qualifications for young people who are entering the, the labor market, and also close cooperation between the government, academia, and the local businesses to make sure that in the future, our educational system will provide and teach young people for jobs of the future and not only for jobs of the past. So low-cost manufacturing will gradually move into medium, higher type of manufacturing that will deploy technologies like, like AI, also like for the for industrial revolution, for, for I type of technologies. And that all needs to be supported um, to help existing companies to move towards that next step of development. So the fact that uh, Bin Jung has invested in, uh, like in Eastern International University, in a competence center around smart manufacturing, these are all important assets in the ecosystem that will help the existing industry to move to the next step and to the next stage of, of manufacturing. That also means that uh, manufacturing will be more efficient in the future, and that is necessary because, because of the growth of this province, also the cost of the labor will rise, and that means that we have to become more efficient in the way we manufacture and produce goods, and that also requires that the, the average level of education has also have to improve. So Ben Jung is successfully following, pursuing a strategy of gradually increasing the value and more knowledge into the economy. 
And by having this vision, uh, Ben Jung also succeeded in attracting some future-proof type of investments like Lego, who are now building their first sustainable factory here in the world. So by entering this new vision, uh, Ben Jung also starts to reach out to a new type of foreign investment that help us to make that transformation also after we reach top one in ICF today. So what strategy should Ben Jung adopt for its next development phase? to maintain its momentum, add that innovative cement prep shape up. And can you also elaborate on the benefit of the accelerator strategy and how it can be a bond for other cities and regions aiming to achieve similar growth and innovation? I think in w when you look around in Asia, you see uh, many opportunities because of the international tension or trade restrictions between China and the US. So we see a lot of businesses moving uh, from China and from Taiwan to countries like Thailand and Vietnam. So if we can provide the right conditions for these more highly advanced type of businesses to create their operations here in Vietnam and especially in Binh Dung, that will bring Vietnam in a position to benefit from this international uh, the geopolitical developments in a very positive way. And I think that is also necessary, as I just mentioned, um, if you want to move on the ladder of the value chain, up the value chain, you have to increase the value, you have to increase the knowledge, you have to put more effort in R&D and also in like entrepreneurship. You have to encourage the uh, local startup ecosystem because no longer will Vietnam only be producing goods for other countries, but they have to start accelerating also the creation of own IP and IDs that eventually will lead into an own industry base in the country. So that means if you start to develop your own products, uh, you also increase the level of value, and that means that is also contributing to your growth of GDP. So Clock in Bidion's experience in developing circular economies and striving for climate integrity involve similar initiatives at Amriti. I think uh, what we are doing here today and yesterday with Horasis is a good example of that. That is also one of the efforts of Benzoom, not only to benefit on the local level, but also to reach out to other parts of the country. We are witnessing other provinces of, out of Vietnam joining here today in Horasis Conference. Um, and also on a national level, the, the, the this development of Binh Dung has caught attention. I had the pleasure of hosting a delegation from the, Binh Dung, uh, from the national government last year when Prime Minister Pham Minh Chin, together with his cabinet, visited Eindhoven. And he visited Eindhoven because he was aware of the relationship between Eindhoven and Binh Dung. So in addition to what we do in Binh Dung, we now also start to work with the national government, looking into opportunities, how this model can be deployed at other places in Vietnam. But it will not surprise you if I tell you that we also work in countries like Malaysia and Laos, because that has caught the attention that they can follow a similar path. So you will see competition all over uh, Asia, between the Asian, Southeast Asian countries, but also Asian countries like India and Bangladesh, all competing in the same sweet spot of future manufacturing. And I think that is the place where Binh Dung at least established a position and from where they can grow and also enter this next stage. As I mentioned this morning, when you get receive the award, it is not your end goal. It's only like a starting point for the next phase of your development, but it will help you to build pride in your local organization and local government because you need self-confidence to take this next step because it's a visionary step, but it's also a risky step. And as you are aware in Vietnam, there is a lot uh, of research and also inv investigations going on. So in government, there is a more a tendency of avoiding the risk of taking big decisions and especially at this point where there is a big economic opportunity, we should, have take, we should take the risk and make this next step and then Vietnam can really uh, uh, benefit from that. So how can entrepreneurship be mustered with its smart city and second economy projects and what role do it does not play in the assess? From your perspective, one of the critical aspects of project management and investment that are necessary to successfully develop small cities and sustainable urban environments? Well, that, that, a lot of questions at the same time. <laughs> we should break them into two then. Um, I think the first thing is that um, if you're building an, eco, an economic ecosystem, 
and you want to pursue uh, R&D and you want to pursue um, IP generation for on a local country level, because so far a lot of raw materials came into Vietnam, we produced the goods and we shipped them out of Vietnam, like we do for Samsung, like we do for Foxconn. It's interesting, it's a lot of business, only it's a relatively small amount of value that sits in your local economy. So your startup ecosystem is a, an essential element of your whole economic ecosystem, because that is where new entrepreneurship, R&D will lead to new ideas, new products that eventually will build the base for the own economic industry here in Vietnam. And I think Bin Yung is a good example. They have invested in the um, incubator here in uh, Bin Yung, but they also uh, realized that Bin Yung is not the end of the world. So they also invested together with Singapore University in the Block 71 incubator which is situated in Ho Chi Minh, so that we are trying to get much more input in terms of uh, the uh, new uh, entries in the economy, in the startup ecosystem. And some of them will, might end up in Binh Yung on an industry park, but some of them will stay in Ho Chi Minh. But that is a way to, let's say, stimulate the overall uh, acceleration of your um, entrepreneurship ecosystem. So as a former member of the provincial government of not uh, Brabant and gain public speaker, what leadership qualities do you believe are essential for driving urban transformation projects? We are facing a situation in Vietnam that there is a lot of investigation into towards transparency and also um, integrity. And that leads to a kind of standstill in government for public spending. And we all know that a major part of the infrastructure we need, like physical infrastructure, roads, uh, railways, and other connections to ship products and knowledge, that uh, needs public spending. And at this moment, we see that public spendings are below any reasonable target in Vietnam. So the risk-taking is, is at this point is quite difficult. So the government need to pursue their uh, strategy of investment in the public infrastructure which also includes uh, the infrastructure of your education, uh, like vocational schools and, uh, and academia, universities. So that is one lesson we learn. And the prime minister, on one hand, is advocating that everybody should come to Vietnam and should grow their business. And on the other hand, we also have to catch up with the public investments, like the new airport, like the new metro line. You can mention many examples in Vietnam where we are struggling with the public investment, which will definitely be required from the business side if they eventually will make a decision to invest here in, in Vietnam. You spent the last two days at Reses and you've been through a lot of deliberations and discussions. What is the vibe and what is the key take of uh, the Asia Week 2023? What do you take back? Um, I think the, the first session I joined was on uh, women participation in the economy, which I fully support. I was even a little disappointed that there were only women in the panel because I said, men should also be already convinced that women are an important part of our future workforce at all levels. So uh, equality, uh, the brid bridging the gap of equality will unlock uh, a huge potential, not only in Vietnam, but in many Asian countries. So access to education, uh, both men and women, is of utmost importance. We are facing a, a global scarcity of human resources and talent. So women can make an important contribution there. So that bridge should be definitely be, uh, that gap should be bridged in Vietnam. If you look at the panel sessions here, it's mainly sometimes uh, Asian, but mostly white male speaker of my age. And it should be the generation after me speaking here and also local sp speakers. And it should be more divided be between men and women. That is my first one. And the second one is that everybody acknowledges that geopolitical uh, pr pressure is also open, opening up new opportunities for Asian countries to benefit from. Business will not leave China, but businesses stay in China to produce for the Chinese market. But they will open up secondary hubs for manufacturing in ASEAN to serve uh, other parts of Asia, but also Europe and the US. So that is another sweet spot. Uh, and in addition, it is not only China. Obviously, when you mention China, you also mentioned Taiwan. Taiwan is a, a prime uh, country for a semiconductor. Uh, many Taiwanese suppliers already have subsidiaries uh, around in Vietnam, so that is another uh, space where there is a good opportunity if we can provide the right facilities to host the needs of these com companies that are now looking for alternate destinations to set up their uh, new business. Thanks. Thank you, beautiful. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs>